Sarah here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. And today, as you can see, we are making a mini version of the Lizzie. So, today I wanted to make a different Lizzie, a mini version for Layla's bed, but also I am using a different yarn. I am using Wendy Supreme. And it's... 100% premium acrylic. It's a DK weight, so normally for a size 4 millimeter crochet hook, but I will be using my 3.5 as usual. So I'm using cream, gold, mocha, natural, duck egg, cookie, spring meadow, eucalyptus, koala, sea green, pistachio, and teal. So I will be using my three and a half higher higher hook. I also have a darning needle, scissors and I've got some stitch markers ready to indicate that first and last stitch of the row. You will also need the mini Lizzie pattern which will be available on my blog. Follow the link in the description box below. Okay, so to get started on our mini Lizzie, we are going to be chaining 62. So I'm going to make my slip knot, whichever way you usually do it. And then I need to chain so that I have a number that's dividable by 2 and 3. So 60 would be my number, but then you have to add 2 stitches, so 62. So let's get started. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I will see you when I have 62 stitches. So here are my 62 chains. So now I am going to do a chain one and every row starts with a chain one. This chain one is our turning chain and it does not count for our stitches. So keeping an eye on my 62nd chain here, I do my turning chain. I'm going to let it serve as a turning chain. And then into the 62nd chain, I am going to place a half double crochet. So that means you will be yarning over insert pull up a loop yarn over and pull through the three loops on your hook and in fact i am going to do a half double crochet in each chain along my chain here okay so you should be doing 62 half double crochets of course, you can make this blanket bigger if you wanted to. Then I would like to refer you to all my other videos about this because it will give you more of an idea of what to do if you make it bigger. But really, everything is the same. Now, I'm not going to explain every row for this blanket like I did in the Lizzie Cal. So the Lizzie Cal was done in five weeks at least for the body of the blanket. Week six was the border. So each week we had a sequence of five rows and each row had a different stitch. Some rows were normal rows, like this one, you know, what I call the boring rows, just a row of half double crochets or just a row of double crochets. And then each week also had two interesting rows, the not so boring rows, so to speak, like a V stitch, like a berry, like a box, things like that. So the five rows were made up of three boring rows and two interesting rows. And that was a formula that kept you going. It was a boring row, yes, but you know, in a moment you're going to do an interesting row. And if you didn't like the interesting row, it's not so bad because in a moment you'll be doing a boring row. <laughs> so that formula worked quite well. And 
so you will see that also for this mini Lizzie blanket I have copied the hints that I put in the pattern next to the colours that you are doing so that will give you a quick reminder of what you're supposed to be doing in that row if you want more information about that row how in particular you do these things and I would like to refer you to the videos of those weeks you will also see that I have the name of the sister next to that part of the mini Lizzie and that means it's that particular week that you have to go and watch <laughs> I'm just doing my last stitch of the row here and I am not pulling through the last pull through when we are changing color we are always going to pull through the new color on the last pull through of that row so I am just going to cut off my yarn and in the Lizzie each row has a new color so you do one row with one color and then you change so now I need to do the pull through. There we go. And I have changed color ready to use mocha. So now we are going to do our chain one, which is our turning chain. Then you turn your work. And now we are going to get started in the first V. So in fact, where that turning chain is coming out of and this row is a double crochet row so you yarn over insert pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and yes it's a boring row we are going to do a whole row of double crochets so i will see you at the end of the row just finishing my last stitch if you're not sure about your last stitches etc make sure you put stitch markers in there okay so I haven't done the last pull through cut it off and we will go to our list the next one is cream and so I'm going to pull that through and get started in cream so chain one and turn then we do a double crochet into the first v that your turning chain is coming out of and in fact every special row you will be starting and finishing in a double crochet then we will start our special stitches so to get started you're going to skip a v work in the next one with a double crochet a chain and a double crochet so we're doing a V stitch then you skip two stitches working in the third you place a V stitch one double crochet one chain and one double crochet into that same stitch and then you skip two working in the third so this is how you are going to continue all along your row so I'm just doing my last V and now I have one V here left and then another one so that one belongs to here and then here I have my location for my double crochet there we go see and that is our third row done and yeah I should not have pulled through so let's go back one step there cut off the yarn and we are going to do the next one 
which is sea green and which is a double crochet row. So this is how you will continue all along your blanket. There are 50 rows to do and each week is repeated twice. So that gives you two repeats and there will be colours for every row on the blog post. So do go and have a look and see if you can make this mini Lizzie too. I am using the Wendy Supreme Decay for this version and I am really enjoying using this. is my mini Lizzie. Isn't she adorable? Right, so as you can see, no ends have been sewn in. Of course, every row was a different colour, so there's lots of ends, but this cowl in particular, we used the double border. So we used an enclosed border which will hide all our ends. In fact, in the whole Lizzie blanket, we didn't sew in one end. So I'm hoping to do the same for this one, of course. Now, for more detailed instructions, of course, again, go to the videos of the border. It will tell you exactly how to do the border there. So to get started on a double border, you first do a round of slip stitches because this is where you're going to adhere your front border to and your back border. Make my slip stitches the same size. Try to be very mindful to where you put them. Please do go to the blog post to see which colours I have used for the front border and the back border. And even the ends of the slip stitch round, you do not need to sew those in. So I'm doing my first round of the back border. So that means I am picking up the back bump of that slip stitch. Of course, for the Lizzie, we did a lot more rows, which was great and which suited it, but it was a bigger blanket. So that needs to be taken into account as well. Yes, yeah, so on top of that one, I do another round in another colour. So this one is sea green. And in a moment, I will be doing the front border because this one, of course, is the one for the back. Although on the Lizzie blanket, there was not really a front or a back to the blanket because of the repeats of the stitches. Um, we had some stitches facing the front and some stitches facing the back. So there was no front or back to the blanket which of course was one of the lovely things of the Lizzie blanket. Right, onto the back border now, but look how pretty this looks already. <laughs> but of course, yes, if you look at it like this. Mm. <laughs> okay, right, onto the front border. So for the front border, I will be using the duck egg, the mocha, and then closing up both borders with the pistachio. But things will start to come together now. Oh my goodness, look at this. <laughs> it looks so darling. Oh my word. Look at how lovely this border is working out. Okay, for our corner. I think it is. And then you're going to look at the V's of your both borders. And you're just going to pick up the front border, pick up the back border and do a single crochet. So this is how you are going to crochet both the borders together. And as if by magic, your ends will disappear, never to be seen again. 
<laughs> so I have poked these ends into here because otherwise there would be too much here. So I have sort of used my little finger and just continued them into that border there which of course is fine to do otherwise it would not be such a neat finish there so keeping them down finding the v's doing our single crochets okay so we cut this off now i did promise we were not going to so in a single end but of course we have to get rid of this last end because yes the end of the pistachio i did push into there as well so we are going to try and do this neatly with our hook so it looks as if this is a stitch so this is like an invisible weaving so that's okay and what we do here is the following you insert your hook into the border anywhere sort of lower down then you come out really close to where the pistachio is coming out you loop the pistachio around and you bring it through now the thing is if you do this pulling make sure the minute you feel it snag stop okay because that means you're of course into a stitch somewhere and I'm going to not pull it out. I'm just going to leave it like that. Look at this. Look, it's gone. I have not used a needle to sew in a single end. None of the ends of the rows have been sewn in because they are all hiding in the board. enjoyed this video i really loved trying to recreate this lizzie blanket a very popular cal on the channel with the wendy supreme yarn thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye